Hey Susan, welcome to Your Makeup Sucks. Hey Susan, welcome to Your Makeup Sucks, the series where I teach you all about makeup theory. And I'm not talking drag makeup theory, I'm talking like normal, I'm going out and want to look good and learn how to properly do makeup the best way theory. So I'm going to be teaching you what brushes do, what products to use for different skin types, how to identify your skin type, all of that fun stuff. I'm going to be going over common mistakes, common mishaps, everything. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking all about brushes. I'm going to be telling you what brushes do what, what brushes you need, what brushes are kind of like a want that you don't really need when you're getting started. Uh, and then also how to hold your brushes, depending on what kind of effect you want, because how you hold your brushes makes a big impact on the final result. So first, we're going to start on uh, base tools and brushes. So the first product we're going to talk about is actually a sponge. So this is a Juno & Co sponge. I used it today, so it is not clean, but essentially these you want to be using wet. And their purpose is to stamp on product. So the stamping it creates like a full coverage finish, it is not designed to make skin look skin-like, however you can manipulate it to make it look more skin-like like I have done with this. Um, so it's very much a stamp, 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 stamp. You never want to be dragging a beauty blender, otherwise you're not going to get a nice finish. Uh, it's just, I recommend everyone have this in their arsenal. You can use it for lighter looks, you can use it to clean things up, you can use it to like pull down like a little mouth and pull down the face or pull across the face to access parts while you're doing other bits of makeup um, that you just wouldn't want to do with your finger because you could destroy it. Uh, now we are going to be going on to the actual brushes uh, themselves. So the first brush I want to talk about is a buffer brush. This is a foundation classic, like a foundation one that you use to typically buff product in. I use it less so for that. I use it more for products like cream blush, cream bronzer, cream like anything, anything cream that I want to distribute onto my face, except for highlight, I use my finger for highlight. Now with this brush, you want to be holding it right down the bottom because you don't want a lot of pressure, otherwise it's going to, uh, you're gonna get all the little dots in it and all the lines in it, and it's not gonna bend, blend in and like buff into your skin nicely. So you just wanna like either stipple, 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 or you want to just buff. And essentially here's just any brush and how it works closer you hold it, the more pressure it's going to apply. So if you look at this, or like do this even better, and grab a brush right down here and start buffing and stippling, it's gonna have a lot of force. Hold it back, buff, stipple, less force. Hold it right at the end, buff, stipple. It's like a tickle, it's barely any force. This is really important that you're holding it down the bottom unless you really are like packing it on or creating texture for like some special effects work or to cover eyebrows or something along that line, you want to be holding these right down the end. Now we're going to be talking about the flat paddle uh, foundation brushes. So I don't really use a flat paddle foundation brush. A flat paddle foundation brush is typically used for applying product first and then you blend it in with like your fingers or a buffer brush or a sponge. But I don't see the purpose in doing this when you can just, um, do it with the product. I used to use them for like mapping out my contouring uh, in drag. I would never map out my contour with this for normal makeup uh, because it just creates too harsh an effect. You can technically use it on its own if you just keep patting, 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 patting from kind of about this kind of grip. So I've got a little bit more control than with the buffer brush because I'm holding it here, resting it there, but I've still got um, very light pressure. So it being here, and catching on like this part of my hand will give me the control, but being back and being able to flap like this is going to give me less pressure and a more natural uh, skin-like finish, which is what we want. Now, the next prop we're gonna be talking about is a buffing concealer brush. So this is just like a little small brush that you use for like spot concealing or anything along that line. So how you typically want to use this is you want to hold it probably about midway down you can hold it further back, but it gives you less control. And when you are spot concealing, you kind of want some control, uh, but you don't want to be like, otherwise it's gotta be obvious that you've spot concealed. So you want to hold it about midway. You just want to stipple it over any area that you want to hide. And you just want to be doing little, little, little buffing circles around the area to blend it back into the actual foundation itself. Uh, so yeah, really nice brush. I love it in my arsenal. I can also use it to get right up into the eye if, 
uh, I want to, sometimes I'll just use my fingers, sometimes I'll use a sponge, sometimes I'll use this. Really just depends how I'm feeling that day. I guess the next, next brush that we should talk on while we're doing that line is a flat top, um, not flat top, a flat paddle concealer brush. So as you can see, this one is more rounded and this one is more pointed. Oh god, where am I? <laughs> there I am. Um, I'm lucky to you find it's kind of confusing because uh, it's flipped. Uh, so essentially this one that is less pointed, I use more for like crease cutting and you want to just kind of like stamp, 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 or like cleaning up eyebrows. You'd want to just slowly work across that. Um, normally you don't want to really clean up the eyebrows too much, but there are some situations where it's called for like in more glam makeup, you might want to clean it up if you've like uh, really arched out the eyebrow or in drag makeup, even though I wasn't talking about drag makeup, we're talking about brush uses here. So that's nice. And then clean up a lip, get right in, very precise, clean that up. Really nice brush to have. Um, this brush I typically use more as a product application brush because this point lets you get right up in there. It's like, say I want to apply something right on the like um, under eye. This point lets me just place it right there, right inside of it without having to like adjust my eye or anything and then with eye primer which is another thing I really use it for you can just kind of get in there and press it all in do all that work uh it's just a really nice really really nice brush to have on hand you can use it for cleanups uh it really just depends how I feel whether I use this one or this more rounded brush so now we're going on to I guess what I would classify as the face powder brushes uh some of these have been used today because I've filmed a bunch of videos today uh, so sorry about that, but uh, this is a kind of small one. This is normally all black. There is white foundation powder on here for my drag look. Uh, but what we want to notice about, oh, also I didn't mention these, these, these ones with pressure, you can hold them just about anywhere. You probably want to hold them more close up actually to get control because they're not really used for blending as much as just getting the product down. I'm looking at my viewfinder so that I'm like facing you guys but I can not poke myself in the eye, if that makes sense, because I'm like, ooh, um, yeah. Uh, and then if you are like working with the eye primer one, say, uh, then you just wanna, when you have applied it like that, then you wanna hold it back here and you wanna just tap, 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 tap. Um, so I kind of, or I just use my fingers a lot of time to pack it, pack it in after I have the uh, product down. So this is, if we look at how this is constructed, it is kind of like an oval, uh, how it is actually glued into the brush. So this means that from this side, it's going to be wider than it is from this side. This is really good for getting up in there to contour because it is going to cover a large area this way, but not as large of an area this way. Uh, and the way you want to use this one is you want to firstly hold it right down here you don't want much control of it. You want it to be like loose, light-handed, so that it gives you like a nice, beautiful, blended finish. Uh, you want to use small circles. You either want to use small circles if you are doing more glam makeup. Uh, you can get away with that. However, the way I use it when I'm doing like uh, less glam makeup and more natural makeup, or even you know what, I'll do it a lot like this when I'm using glam makeup because you can still do it. It just takes longer to build it up. Is you want to swipe down, lift, swipe up, lift swipe down, lift, swipe up, lift. Because if you go back and forth, you feel that there's a certain spot where you get pressure that builds up and goes So it's like, it's gonna make it patch you with circles. You kind of ignore um, the absolute top of it and only use the outside. So there's no real concentrated pressure that's going to give you patchiness, but it is going to make this area wider uh, and a little bit less controlled. So back, forth, back, forth, or alternatively, you can go forward, off, forward, off, forward, off, forward, off, which can look really flattering as well, or backwards, off, backwards, off, backwards, off, like flattering. You just want to make sure that you're not going back and forth with this one. That's the big thing. Make sure you're not going back and forth uh, because otherwise you're going to have a little patchiness in the product. I'm also struggling to look forward because of the light. Let me just calm the light down a little bit. There we go. Now the light's a little bit more calm. I can look at it a little bit easier. Next one, this is like, I'd call a bronzer brush or like a small-ish powder brush for when you want to control your powder product. So it's just like a little, same, same principle, back and forth. It's just like a bigger version of that, 
but it's more flat up the top. That's the only difference. Uh, so this one is like the Eco Tool something something. I haven't talked about what brushes they are. We'll get into what brushes they like they are that I recommend that you need. Uh, at the end of this video, after I talk about how to use each brush, it's probably going to be a long video because there's a lot of brushes to break down. Uh, this is an all over face powder brush. I don't always use this. I mainly use it in drag and it's to powder the whole face. Uh, and oftentimes I don't powder my face at all. Like to this makeup, no powder on my face at all. And it looks stunning because you don't need powder on your face. Even oily people. There are foundations for oily skin people that don't need powder. And yeah, also often under the eye creasing is called spy powder, not because you don't have powder, because you need more hydration there and powder is drying you out. Uh, but we'll get into that in <laughs> some other videos. Uh, now I think that's really, there's kind of like this, which is kind of like a domed equal round brush. This is the only other one you might need. This one's nice for like stippling on like blush or bronzer. That's really nice. But uh, same principle, all the face brushes you want to hold right down the bottom just to really keep it easy. Now I'm gonna be raking it down the eyeshadow brushes into two segments to really save us time because it's taking up a while. So uh, this is a fluffy brush, a uh, fluffy small crease blending brush. Uh, so this is just, it's got a little bit of density to it, but it hasn't got too much where it will just distribute product without blending it. So it's just kind of like, you want to tickle it, you want to hold up the base, and you want to work with it in small circles. That's all it is. Just hold it at the end, small circles. It's really not complicated. You place the product where you want it, and you buff it out. That's that. That's it um, with that one. And it's also a little bit more pinched this way than that way, so it can really get into your crease. Because it's designed for the crease, that one. This one's kind of like an all-over. If you want to, like, set it or, like, do something really just, like, sweeping over the lid, you use this. I don't really use it much because it's just... It's kind of too dense for me, and it's not fluffy enough, and it just distributes too much product. But it is a nice to have. Sometimes I use it for like my nose or like controlled powder application. It could be nice for that. Uh, next we have a pencil brush. Mine is stained, but this is used for like packing on product in very specific places. It's so like say you want to pack like a little bit of black on the outer corner or a shimmer on the inner corner. That's what you use it for. You can honestly hold this brush. However, this is a double-ended brush, but like this is just like a classic fluffy brush that is an Anastasia double-ended brush so I imagine a lot of people would have this in their collection uh, so you just want to hold it as far to the end as possible I don't like double-ended brushes much but I still keep them just because there's less room to hold the ends and control the pressure uh, and also I feel like if this costs pretty much the same as a palette then how much is the brush really what is it like I, I just feel like it's a lower quality brush than individual brushes when they come with a palette that's my thought and double-ended ones also feel like they're lower quality because they're not that much more, so it's like really go. Oh, this is a thicker flat brush that I have used. It's like a concealer one, but it's thicker. These ones are used for shimmer, and you just hold them, honestly, have it because they're just applying shimmer. Honestly, I don't use it that much unless I'm doing a cut crease uh, and packing shimmer over that. Normally, I just use my finger for shimmer because it's easier, it's stunning, it's amazing, it's effortless. There we go. Uh, now I've got, this is a classic blending brush. <laughs> it's got so much product on it because it was from a drag look. Uh, but it's just like a round all the way, domed, hasn't got too many bristles in it, so it kind of, it's very bouncy, light and fluffy. You just use this to like buff everything in and make sure everything's seamless and do little circles all in the eyeball. Just little tiny circles, blends everything out. Amazing to have a clean one on hand at all time. I do have a clean one somewhere in my brush uh, tin, because here's, here's, most of my brushes, there's a, there's a lot. And also all of my dirty ones, I keep separate in a little separate cup. Well, currently the cup is not being used. They're just on the desk, but besides the point, that's just because I want to get an idea of what I actually use. Next type is like a flat concealer brush. You need to just use for cleaning stuff up. Uh, and you just like typically hold them closer because it's for precision cleaning or just like, on top of a little spot. I don't use them much outside of drag makeup where I'm just cleaning up the top of my eyebrow. Now, I guess we'll get on to angled brushes. So let me get a couple angled brushes and explain their different purposes. Angled brushes are a lot more complex than people uh, give them credit to being. Okay, so here are three different angled brushes. This one is a small, thin, tiny brush that's more for liner, or if you don't have eyebrows, like I have no natural eyebrows. I use this to fill it in. Uh, I, well, I, I use this in a combination of this, because this is a 
long brush, but it's ex extremely pinched and thin, uh, while still being like a very wider brush. So I use this to map it out a lot of the time. This is a thick brush that so is also that. It's designed more for pillion brows, so how you do it is you just poke it in, fluff up, poke at the bottom, fluff up, poke at the bottom, fluff up. You can really hold these brushes around the middle, just kind of. It doesn't really matter if you're doing some really precision work, hold it at, the, uh, at like the um, front. You don't want to hold it right at the end because you do want precision with this kind of brush. This, this is like a packer brush. It, this one's stained, but it is just like a very strong oval thin, but like still fluffy brush with some density to it that you can just k -k 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 -k. nice and simple. You just pack the, it's, it's a pack brush. You pack the brush on. You also use this for some more precision nose contour. It's great. Let's talk highlight brush. Uh, this is technically a contour brush, but I like to think of these as highlight brushes. They're small, they're domed without being too small. Because I like precision and highlight, but I don't like a super amount of precision. This one kind of blends out for you. You just want to work same as any other thing, just back forth, back forth, or in small little circles, avoiding the pressure spot of any domed brush. That's strict to a domed brush. Hold at the end and avoid the pressure spot. That's all you need to do. Just think about a brush, what's trying to achieve and how to best use it. Let the brush do the work for you. Don't do the work for the brush, if that makes sense. Uh, this is another just concealer brush. I have so many of these because you can also use them for shadow packing. They're very versatile. Uh, fan brushes, I don't have any for my glam makeup. I only have it for my face painting ones, so they're cheap ones. But these are typically used for like very light product application or creating texture which is what I use them for in my face painting and special effects work, I use them to create texture. I don't believe in fan brushes for beauty makeup at all. Fuck that. So there's like these little brushes, which are more face painty, but they're like just a normal paint brush looking ass thing with like a little line of bristles. Uh, this is a little packer that's like teeny tiny for precision. Um, and it's just like a floppy, uh, like a fluffy equivalent of a concealer paddle brush. Uh, what else is there? There's this, this is like another, this is a smudger brush. So it's just a thin round to a tip brush. Uh, really nice to have. This is a liner brush, like a typical liner brush. It's just a really, really thin normal brush. There really isn't too much to brushes. Like there is a lot to brushes, but for the consumer, there's not much you need to know. Uh, this is a uh, just typical blending brush, except it's really small, so it's good for precision work or the lower lash line. I think I've pretty much covered all the brushes that I really use, except maybe this one, which is like a matte, big concealer paddle, which I use for drag mapping, but that's not really applicable for people who don't do drag. Um, there's smaller variations of all the brushes and bigger variations of all the brushes, but I feel like I've covered all of the overarching ones. Oh, except spoolies. Spoolies are just used for brushing brows or to declunk uh, eye eyelashes. The final products that you need, that I think you need for a starter kit are a uh, beauty sponge, a uh, highlight brush that's kind of domed and big, a buffing foundation brush, a kind of big general face brush that's like, I guess medium, but that you use more for like sweeping blush, sweeping bronzer, that kind of thing like a small little contour brush for more precision on the face. Uh, and then the eyes, I'd, oh, and also for the face while we're on it. And a uh, round concealer brush for touch-ups. And then for the rest of the eyes, you want a um, concealer brush just to make sure everything's nice and cleaned up or you can apply uh, eye primer or whatever your gig is. You want a little angled brush for your brows and liner. A smaller one is better if you can only get one. If you can get multiple, it's just a bigger one for brows and probably you have natural brows and then a small one for liner. A big fluffy blending brush for blending all the eyeshadow and creating just really natural effortless eyeshadow looks when you want to do that. A smaller one for when you want to do any lower lash line or precision work. Say you want to get a little bit of black in the outer corner. That's really nice. Just a small one. Uh, a thick uh, paddle brush for applying shimmers, a packer brush for packing on shadow before you blend it out with the bigger one. Uh, by having a packer brush and then a blender brush, you can get away with having a lot fewer brushes because you can kind of pack everything on 
and keep the blender brush pretty clean by dipping into like a neutral shade and then buffing all over it because then it will buff everything out but it won't really get the product into the bristles so you can just knock off everything the bristles and keep going with less brushes it's just really nice to do that that way and then a petal brush just for really getting into the inner corner and getting a really nice highlight which i think just finishes off any look uh, so really yeah i think that's all you need brush wise uh so if you make this part of the video, if you learn anything, if you feel like you, uh, maybe I missed something and you'd want that explained, comment down below. I'll explain it. Any questions you have about makeup, uh, I will answer them either in the comments or in another video. Uh, remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, do all the fun YouTube things. Bye, Susan.